today. I want to thank everyone for coming uh, to the webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name is Brandon Grant. I'm the marketing director here at QuoteWorks. Um, today we're going to be doing a demonstration of the QuoteWorks software, kind of like a workflow of how the software is used, how you can um, build quotes and proposals pretty quickly. Um, I have a couple things that we'll want to show off to you guys and some of the um, major features that are in the software available for everyone. Um, we are going to be recording this webinar today, so if you came in late or you have to leave early or someone from your team wasn't able to make it, no problem. Um, it'll be posted on the website here in just a couple of days. Um, we will be taking questions as we go through, and there will also be time at the end of the meeting to answer a bunch of questions as well. So if there's something very specific to your company that you want to see, um, hang around to the end, um, post a question, and uh, we'll make sure we cover that with you. So to get started, a um, couple things we always like to mention about QuoteWorks is that we are the uh, market-leading sales quoting proposal solution. We have over 70,000 users in over 100 countries, and we have over 20 years of experience. So um, QuoteWorks has been around for over 20 years, so it's constantly being developed and refined, and it's uh, something we take a lot of pride in that uh, we've been around for so long and we continue to evolve and add new features um, with every release. So today we're going to just kind of go over a short PowerPoint presentation of some of the features in the software. Um, we have some workflow diagrams that you guys will be able to view um, that will kind of help uh, visualize how you'll use the software. And then uh, the website's a great place for any kind of questions that you have. So if you do want to see a different video on a specific feature that we talk about today, or maybe you just want to see another video about um, another overview of the software, um, the website's going to have all that information available. Also, you can always feel free to give us a call or send us an email if you do have any questions. So some of the major features in QuoteWorks are going to include your CRM and PSA support. So if anyone's using uh, one of the major, uh, essentially 12 CRM or PSA softwares that's out there, uh, we have a list of them on our website, and I'll show you where you can find that information. But we do support those, so you would have your contact integration, opportunity support. Um, a lot of times we'll be able to schedule follow-up activities with those so you can keep track of everything. So we have a lot of tight integrations with a lot of the CRM and PSA systems that are available. Uh, we do provide product and services sourcing, so if you have your own product list that you want to import into QuoteWorks and maintain in QuoteWorks, we can do that. We can also link to external databases, so if you have your items set up in QuickBooks or Stage 50 uh, or Autotask or ConnectWise or something like that and you want to connect to those databases, we're able to do that as well, and I'll show you how um, all that's done today as well. Um, the output to your customer is also um, completely customizable. So if you want to send your customer a single one-page quote or a multiple-page proposal with various attachments and statements of works and timesheets, you'll be able to do that all in the software. It's uh, very easy to do. You can set up templates for your users. It uh, makes it easy to standardize everything across your entire organization for everyone that's delivering a document to the customer. Uh, delivery, you're going to have a few options. Uh, we can email the document. Uh, you can print it out if you need to fax it to your customer. And then we also have Quote Valet, which is going to be our online quote delivery system for QuoteWorks, where you can actually deliver a link to the customer, and they can view their quote in a web page and then actually electronically sign and accept it. And uh, we'll make sure to touch on that today as well. Uh, we do offer PO support. So once your customer has accepted the document, if you're ready to create the purchase order or send it over to your accounting system, We'll, we'll be able to do that, and that, again, that's something that we'll make sure to catch on here in um, just a few minutes. Um, and then we do also offer order tracking, so if you are using one of the distributors that we support, or if you just want to be able to track the items in QuoteWorks, even if it's not with a distributor we don't support, uh, you would actually be able to mark items as received and add tracking numbers and serial numbers so you can have all that information in a centralized location. So to go back to the uh, major features, so your CRM and PSA support, um, like I said, you're going to be able to pull contacts from these CRM and PSA systems. Uh, you're going to be able to create opportunities, follow-ups, and a lot more information. Um, we have direct links into them. Um, all these integrations have been refined. Them, They're all compatible with the latest versions of the software. So if you're running the latest version of like ACT or QuickBooks or um, Autotask or ConnectWise or anything like that, and you're looking to um, use QuoteWorks with that system, we do support it. Uh, if you have questions about setting up, just let us know. We'll be happy to help you with that. Um, going to the products and services, again, um, if you wanted to import your price file into QuoteWorks, we can do that. Uh, if you have your price file out in a different uh, system, may maybe you have it in Salesforce or you have it in an Excel sheet or some kind of SQL database or access database, we can link to it. You don't necessarily have to import it, or you can do a mix and match. You know, We do have a lot of companies that will want to have their services in QuoteWorks because we can do recurring items. 
um, and but they have their products in another database that we just linked to. So you'll be able to mix and match. That's not a problem. Our custom output, um, you're going to have two, two basic options. Uh, you're going to have the QuoteWorks Layout Designer, which will um, is more database driven. So you have database fields that you kind of move around in the layout. Uh, it's more of a simplified version of Crystal Reports, if anyone's uh, familiar with that system. And then we also have the Word Merging. So if you're more comfortable with using Word, you can actually insert QuoteWorks macros into your Word document. And we'll pull that information from QuoteWorks into your Word document and then convert that Word document to a PDF that can then be delivered to the customer. Uh, we do support full proposals, so if you have you know, 18, 25, 50-page documents that you have to send to your customers with various attachments and graphs and all that information, you'll be able to do that through QuoteWorks as well. Um, delivery, QuoteValley, again, this is going to be the online delivery method for QuoteWorks. Um, it's really nice because it's going to provide you tracking information on what your customers are doing. So you'll be able to see, okay, um, is my did my customer view the quote for the first time? Uh, did they accept it? Did they make payment? Did they post a comment? Did they change an option? Uh, do they pass it along to someone else in the office? You'll be able to see and receive all that information via Quote Valley. So it's a really cool system. Um, one of probably our um, best features that we have in the software. So I um, really encourage you to take a look at that. Uh, you can email the document to your customer. So if you just need a simple way of just delivering the document through QuoteWorks, we can email it. Um, and it can be printed or faxed from the software as well. Our PO support, um, we, do, we will create POs in QuoteWorks. Uh, we can also export a purchase order to QuickBooks Stage 50, or if you're using Autotask and ConnectWise, we can actually create the purchase order in there. So if you're using any of those four systems, we can actually create the purchase order for you. We do have some other accounting integrations for um, QuickBooks and Stage 50, so if you want to be able to create like an estimate or a sales order or an invoice in those systems, we'll be able to do that through QuoteWorks as well. Uh, we do have our order tracking, so after you've created the purchase order or just submitted the order via QuoteWorks, you can actually um, track the ordered items in QuoteWorks, uh, either manually or in real time if it's one of the distributors that we support. We do have uh, the distributors listed on our website that are available. Um, Mark has a good question. He's asking if Quote Valley is hosted by QuoteWorks or if it's something you manage on your own website. Quote Valley is hosted by us, um, so it is a subscription uh, that you just purchase through QuoteWorks, and then um, you just, you'll access it through our um, servers that we uh, rent. So some of the other features that we have, um, we have our recurring groups. Uh, so if any of you sell hardware as a service um, or just need to um, create items as kind of like a monthly service charge, uh, you can do that in QuoteWorks. We touched on our integrated layouts with um, Microsoft Word. Um, we have our CRM and PSA integrations, our accounting integrations. The Quote Importer, this will allow you to import quotes from like Cisco, Dell, HP, and Netformix. So if you ever receive e-quotes, from these programs, you'll actually be able to pull those into QuoteWorks. We also have a feature called Paste Special that would allow you to get, um, if you ever receive any Excel quotes from your distributors, you'll be able to copy and paste that data from Excel into QuoteWorks as well. Um, and then we do have a uh, QuoteWorks dashboard, which we're actually working on expanding, um, but it kind of gives you a snapshot of your documents in QuoteWorks. So uh, pretty cool feature there. So one of the main questions we always receive um, when users are evaluating QuoteWorks is um, what, how do we use the software, kind of what's the workflow. So QuoteWorks is a complete solution. So we're going to be able to go from creating the document to fulfilling the order um, and delivery and purchasing in the middle as well. So the first step you're always going to take in QuoteWorks is you're going to select your contact first. You always want to have your contact in the document. This is kind of the starting point for any document in QuoteWorks. From there, you will then be able to select your products and services that you want to add to the document. You can mix and match. That's fine. Uh, we support bro both products and services. Um, there's just going to be line items on the document as far as QuoteWorks is concerned. Once you've made your changes and adjustments, you can then save the document and then deliver the quote to your customer or the quote or proposal. Uh, if you are using Quote Valet, um, this is when you will also deliver it to the customer via this way as well. Um, and this is something that we're going to walk through here in just a few minutes. Uh, once the customer accepts or makes payment on the document, we'll be able to update your opportunity in, in the CRM or PSA if you're using one. So if you're, you are using one of those integrations, once the customer is accepted, we'll be able to convert that quote to an order in QuoteWorks, and that will then update your CRM or PSA opportunity that it's been won or closed or whatever the terminology is that you're using there. Um, from there, you'll be able to resource pricing. So if maybe it's been three weeks since you sent this quote to the customer and they just purchased, so you need to check pricing before you place the order, you'll have that option in QuoteWorks where you can actually um, check pricing before creating the purchase order. 
uh, which is going to be the next step. So you can place the online order uh, if it's one of the distributors that we support. If it's not, that's fine. We can still create that purchase order, and then we can even export that purchase order to QuickBooks, Stage 50, Autotask, or ConnectWise. So if you are using one or um, any of those systems, we'll be able to actually take that uh, purchase order document and send it over to one of those systems. And then from there, you will um, have the option to be able to track the order all the way through delivery and fulfillment. So you can actually mark items as received, add those tracking numbers and serial numbers. Um, so it's a pretty cool um, it's, it's a pretty cool solution to use where you'll be able to actually see it from start to finish, from the customer requesting it to the customer actually receiving the items. Um, yeah, Mark, uh, Mark is asking if there's a way to collect like a down payment. Uh, yeah, Mark, you can actually set a deposit amount on your quote or proposal, and then when the customer accepts the quote, uh, Quote Valley will actually require that deposit amount. And that's something I can show you at the end of the meeting. So if you decide to use Quote Valet, um, one of the really nice things about Quote Valet is it comes with its own reporting vehicle um, called Quote Valet Web. And what Quote Valet Web will provide you with is real-time information on your documents in Quote Valet. So any document you deliver through Quote Valet, you'll actually be able to get this reporting information. So there's an executive dashboard that will show you how many quotes have been sent, how many have been accepted, how many have been paid, the top quotes for the month or the week, whatever um, range you want to set. Uh, how many have been viewed by customers, if you have any sales rep comments, if you want to compare your reps against each other, you'll be able to do that. So it's going to provide a wealth of information in one spot for your users. Um, the comparative analysis will compare the reps against each other so you can actually see which reps have created the most documents, which ones have been converted to orders, that type of information will be available. The My Summary would be specific for reps so they can actually see what's going on with their documents in Quote Valley so they can see how many document views they've had for the week or the month or even just today. They can see which ones have been ordered, which ones have just been accepted but haven't been paid yet. All that information will be available for the rep as well on their documents. Uh, there's also a status board which is very useful if you have multiple reps in a similar location or a um, in like the same office. You can actually set this up in like a uh, large monitor or like a TV and they can actually see what's going on in real time with any orders that are coming through. It's really, really handy if you have any reps that are in and out of the office all the time. If you have guys that are coming in from the field and guys that are going out to the field and as you have orders coming in, you can make sure that they're, all those orders are being processed and followed up on because the, everyone will be able to see what's going on with any documents um, that have been accepted and paid for by the users. Uh, there's a find, um, find functionality, so you can search for documents in Quote Valet Web. Uh, there's your inbox, which is going to mimic the Quote, Quote Valet inbox in QuoteWorks. Um, so it's going to provide you the same information of what's going on with your documents. You know, have you had any recent views? Have you had any recent orders? Anything like that. Um, and then there are the peer review and approval support. So if you have reps out in the field who want to or need approval for a document, they can actually submit it through Quote Valet Web, so you don't actually have to be in QuoteWorks to do that functionality. Um, we have a ton of resources on the website, so I do encourage you to go there. Uh, if you do have questions or you can't find what you're looking for in the software, um, we have demonstration videos, feature videos um, specific to um, certain functionality in the software. Uh, we have overview videos that are just kind of like a broad demonstration video. And then we have all these uh, webinars that we're doing. Uh, these are all being recorded and posted on the website as well. So again, anyone that came in late, uh, we are recording this, so if you did miss it, uh, don't worry. We're going to post it on the website here in a couple days, and you'll be able to watch it then. Um, our online help file is going to be our user's manual. So if you do have questions about uh, setting something up in QuoteWorks or just need some help, uh, the online help file is available on the website. It's also available in the software itself. Um, it's searchable by keyword, and there is an index. So it makes it very easy to locate items in the document or specific features in the document as well. Um, some of the best reasons to choose QuoteWorks, um, it is turnkey, so it is an off-the-shelf product. It's ready to um, add to your company's current process. You're not looking at much in implementation time. You're also not looking at much in resources. Um, it's pretty much a plug-and-play software that just needs the minimal customization. Uh, we do offer phone tech support um, as well as phone sales support. So if you do have questions or need some assistance, feel free to give us a call. We're available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, our licensing is concurrent if you guys are on the same network, so you can actually share licensing among users. Um, you only need as many users as you'll have logged in the system simultaneously. Uh, we do have over 70,000 users worldwide, um, so we're in over 100 countries. Like I said, we've been around over um, 20 years, so we have a, a very, very stable user base and we have a lot of users 
Uh, we do offer professional services, so if you do need some help getting customizations done in the software, we do offer those. Um, and there is a money back guarantee. So if you do purchase the software and after um, within 30 days you decide that it's just not going to work for you, just let us know and um, you're eligible for your money back. Um, and then one of the best and probably the nicest things about CoreWorks is it is a one-time purchase. You purchase the software and you do, do own it. Uh, there's an annual subscription to keep the software up to date, but the actual licensing itself you don't have to pay every month to keep. You actually just purchase the software and it's yours. Uh, we go to a lot of events. So if you guys are out at any of the ASCII events or if you're going to be at IT Nation here in Orlando, uh, definitely stop by. I would uh, be happy to speak with you and we can even do on-site demonstrations at these. Um, if you are a ConnectWise user and you're going to IT Nation or you're not going to make it to IT Nation, we are going to be holding our pre-event online. Uh, we'll be sending out an email here um, probably in the next couple weeks uh, with an invitation for, uh, for everyone. So if you're interested in signing up for that, please do so. Um, we've had so many requests in the past. and um, the room we always get is, you know, only holds about 30 or 40 people. So we figured doing it online, we'll be able to get a lot more people this year. Uh, we're on, obviously, all the uh, major social media sites, so Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn. Uh, so if you do have questions or um, would like to interact with us, it's a great place to do that. Uh, we also do have forums on the website. So if you want to interact with other Quotworks users, um, we have a lot of partners and a lot of longstanding um, users that, have, that frequent the forums. It's a great place to gather some information on the software. So the first thing I wanted to show you is let's go ahead and go to our website here. So I'm just going to load up our website. Um, this is, again, a great place where you can find a lot of information. Uh, when I was talking about the help file, that can be found under support. So just click on the word support. Don't actually click on the menu option, but just simply click on support. And then you'll see there's a help system link about halfway down the page where it says help system and quick start guide. If you click on that, that will actually open up the help file for you. So this is that online help file that I was talking about. So if you need help setting up Quiltworks or specific integration or just trying to use a specific feature in the software, this is a great place where you can find that information. Additionally, on the website, we do have our videos that's also going to be under support. So if you highlight support and then scroll down to videos, you'll see there's a videos link. And this will bring you to the videos page. And that is searchable by keyword as well because we do have, um, I think, over 130 videos. So you can type, you know, if you're looking for, oh, I need help setting up my ACT integration, you can type in ACT, and it'll show you all the videos that um, pertain to the ACT integration. So a lot of great information on here. And again, if you do have questions or would like some assistance with the setup, feel free to give us a call. Um, we'd definitely be happy to help. Um, the last thing I want to mention is the, yes, um, we do have the forums on the website as well. Um, so under our support option, um, if you go to about halfway down the page, you'll see it says um, forums. You can sign up there. Um, again, this is a great place for anyone that's interested in speaking with other members of the um, QuoteWorks community. Um, you can go there, and you'll be able to actually see and interact with other users in QuoteWorks. All right, so let's go ahead and go to QuoteWorks. So we're going to go ahead and start with a brand new quote here. So we're going to start with a blank quote. So the first thing we want to do in QuoteWorks when we start a new quote is we want to start on the Sold to Ship to tab. The Sold to Ship to tab is where we select our contacts. So if you're using Act, ConnectWise, Sugar, Salesforce, any of the CRMs or PSAs that we um, integrate with, this is where you're going to select your contacts. If you haven't set up your contact integration and you'd like to do that, that's done under Contacts, Set up Contact Manager, and then you can select from the list that's available. So any of those CRMs or PSAs that we support, they're going to be in this list. And then you can simply um, select them. Uh, a few of the integrations have extra steps. So again, th that information is in the help file if you need help setting that up. So today I'm going to demonstrate just the QuoteWorks, um, the QuoteWorks contact database, which is our own internal database. Uh, it's not really a contact manager. It's just going to be a contact database. So if you just need a simple place to store contacts, Contact Manager will um, work great for you. If you're looking for a little more information, then you'll probably want to use the CRM or PSA instead. So when we're selecting a contact, no matter what you're using, it's always going to be the same way to search for contact. You're going to click on the magnifying glass here on the Sold to Ship to window. And this will bring up your lookup contact window, no matter what you're using. Most of the contacts, um, the contact manager will let you search by company name, last name, first name, or phone number, or some, ki um, some kind of combination of that information. 
So for here, we already have our contact. I'm going to go and select John here, and then I can pull him into the sold to, ship to, bill to, or if I click all, this will populate in all three fields. So that's what the one I'm going to go ahead and select. You can mix and match if you're selling to one location, shipping to a different, billing to a different. You can mix and match contacts and companies. That's fine. Um, these fields are completely independent of each other. However, the sold to field is the one you want to make sure you always fill out. This is kind of like the default contact field in QuoteWorks for your customer. So this is who's, who we're going to send this document to. This is the contact information that's going to be on the document by default. This is the email address we're going to use. So you always want to make sure you fill out the sold to. The ship to and the bill to, again, like I said, if you need them, they're there and you can use them. If not, you could leave them blank if you wanted to. Once you select a contact, you'll see that a panel opened up on the right-hand side. This is very useful if you have multiple reps working in the same document or um, for, with the same companies and you wanted to see if a quote had already been created for this customer. You can actually select the contact and then when you do that, you'll see any open quotes listed on the right-hand side. So you can see, oh, I was out last week and I have an email from this customer. You pull in that customer here and you can see, oh, there was a quote created last week for this customer. So I can right-click on it and open that document and see if it was already created and if that's the right one then I know that it was already created for the customer and I can just file that email so I don't have to worry about it. So we're going to go ahead and start with a blank quote like I said and um, let me make this a little wider for you guys so you can see what's going on here. So the next step once you've selected your contact is now we can actually start building our document in QuoteWorks. So we're going to click on our document items tab. Now mine is blank. You could create templates in QuoteWorks if you'd like. So if you have, um, you know, if you sell hardware and software and you want to create a hardware template or if you have services that you offer with every document, you want to create services um, in a template that so you don't have to add them to the document that each time you can do that. We're just going to go ahead and go with starting from scratch. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create heading lines in our document. This is how we decide how this document is going to be viewed by the customer and how it's broken out in the document for the customer. So if I right click on my document items screen, there's an option for insert heading. And then I can actually put in my heading description. Now your heading description can be whatever you'd like. If, you, if you're selling hardware and software, you could say, hey, this is going to be my hardware section, this is my software section. Or maybe you're saying, oh, we're selling to this office and this office, so this will be office one, this is office two supplies. However you want to organize it, it's going to be completely up to you. So for simplicity, we're just going to do products. And I'm going to right click again on my document item screen and I'm going to select insert heading and then we'll say services and then I'm going to right click one more time and we'll say optional items. Now if you don't organize your document this way, if you just list the items out for your customer and maybe you group them or subtotal them, you don't have to do this, it's just something I wanted to show you that is available in the software. So, once you've added your heading lines, we can now start adding the items to our document. Now you have a couple different ways that you can do this. The first is to go to your products databases here um, in your product lookup screen. So if you want to see all the databases you've set up in QuoteWorks, simply click on the products icon here. You can also get there by clicking on the products menu up at the top and selecting lookup. So either one's going to bring up your product lookup window. Now the product lookup window, I'll center this so it's a little easier for you to view, is going to have all the databases that you've set up in QuoteWorks. So whether you've imported a database with your items or you're linking to an existing database, those are going to show up here. If you purchase items from Ingram Micro, Tech Data, Synex, um, or DNH, then the Edelize database will be available for you um, with the correct modules. And this will let you search by pretty much anything, manufacturer, part number, uh, keyword, description, however you want to look for your items, you'll be able to do that here. If you're not using one of those distributors, like I said, then you can import one of your price files into QuoteWorks and you'd have a database of those items here. Now, if you do have your own database, you'll be able to search by pretty much anything, manufacturer, vendor part number, description of the item, manufacturer part number, keyword. So it's going to be an easy way to locate your items in QuoteWorks. If you want to see all the items from a database, simply click on Show All and that'll list all the items. So for instance, this database only has six items. You actually see there's a count there at the bottom for you. If you do have you know, 100,000 items, that's fine. QuoteWorks can handle it. It's not a big deal. Um, really, I don't think there's a limit on how many products or services you set up in QuoteWorks. So if you do have hundreds, and th hundreds of thousands of items that you offer, it won't be an issue in QuoteWorks. Um, Yes, and a um, couple, couple of the same questions just rolled in. Um, yes, if you are using the Salesforce product database or the ConnectWise product source, 
and you want to link to those, um, those databases will actually show up here with those database names, so you can actually pull items. It'll look very similar to this database where you'll be able to search by the manufacturer or the manufacturer part number for those items. So let's go ahead and start adding a couple items to our document. So when you select an item in this database, you'll be able to hold control and select multiple items, or you can hold shift and select the, uh, multiple items in a row. So it makes it very easy to locate your items and add the ones to the document that you want. Once you've selected an item, you can either double click on it or click select add to add it to your document. So simply double click on it or click select add and it will be added to the document. Now you'll see this item has a um, picture associated with it, so I've actually assigned a picture with it. So we do support pictures for your products and services in QuoteWorks. Um, if they're pulling from Edelize, a lot of times the pictures will already be associated automatically. If you want to set up your own pictures, we can do that as well. Uh, we can also adjust the quantity from here. So the item, I, I, item assistant will let you make some adjustments before adding this particular item to your document. So if you want to change the quantity, we can use the up and down arrow. You can also just type it in as well, so you don't have to use the up and down arrow for that point. The price modifier slash price field is where you're going to set the price for this particular item. Now this is what you're going to sell this to the customer. You're going to have a few different options here as well. You could type in the price, so if you just wanted to sell this for $1,000, you could type in $1,000, and that's going to be the price for the customer. If you wanted to mark it up, we can do that as well. So if you say, you know, we mark up our items 15% from our cost, so that would be M for markup, and then 15 for the percent that we mark it up, and that will calculate your price. The last one I'm going to show you is if you do profit. So if you say, you know, we need to make a 20% margin on this item, in order to sell it to the customer, that's our minimum margin that we can sell any item. Then you're going to use the letter P for points, or profit is an easy way to remember it, and then you would put in, again, just a percentage. So that's saying if you use M15, that means you're just marking it up from cost, it's just a straight markup. If you're doing P20, that means you want to make a 20% profit on this particular item. If you don't remember our shortcuts, just simply click on the ellipsis button here, and QuoteWorks will prompt you if you want to select a markup a margin, or you can even discount from list. List is going to be your MSRP or your manufacturer suggested retail price. Uh, we just call it list because it's a little easier to manage that way. Um, so you can discount from list. So if, you, if your vendor is sending you a price list and they just give you the list price and then you say, okay, you know, we when we sell to our customers, we discount at 20% off list, you would be able to do that here in QuoteWorks as well. So for this one, let's go ahead and just mark it up 10% from cost for now. Now down below, this is one of the really nice features in QuoteWorks is you're actually going to be able to check price history before you add this item to your document. So if you've sold this particular part number to this specific customer that you selected on your sold to ship to tab, you'll actually be able to see what you sold it to them to. Um, so if we click here, we can actually see we sold this item a lot and we can actually see this is the last time we sold it on this date at this cost and this was the modifier used and this was the document it was in. So it'll actually tell you all that information here. If you've sold this item to maybe another company and you gave another company a really good deal or you just want to see what the last time you quoted this item, what the price was, you can click on the one right below it and it will show you the last time you quoted it no matter what customer it is. So we're actually going to track um, your pricing for you, your, your price history in one spot so it makes it very easy for you to make sure that you're always consistent with your pricing in QuoteWorks. Um, so again, it's a really nice feature to have. And then if you are using our heading lines, like I said, this is um, where these heading lines are very useful for the rep, is that you can come in and say, okay, well, this is a product item, so let's go ahead and select products for uh, our heading. And then I can click add, and I can add it to our item list there. And then you can just repeat the steps for the other items. So if we have these two items, we'll say, hey, these are our two service items that we want to add. Let's go ahead and select them. And then we say, okay, we have two of them. And let's put that under services, click add, and it's going to show up under services. And this one we'll just leave it as one. We just have that one warranty that we're offering. We'll put services, add, and we can add it there. A lot of times we get questions saying um, a lot of the things you'll see in QuoteWorks are going to be AV related or IT related. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. If you do line item quoting, QuoteWorks will probably work for you because all we're doing is showing the customer description and a price. Um, that's basically what it boils down to. So any that type of information you'll be able to use QuoteWorks for. So let's go ahead and add a couple more items to our document. And we'll just add these three. And we'll say, okay, this item is optional. Let's put it under our optional section. And then this one is going to be 
under our product section. So let's go ahead and add it there. And then we have one more for our optional. So you can see that's um, one, one reason I really like the heading lines is it makes it very easy to quickly go through your document and just have it already organized before you start making any adjustments to prices or descriptions or anything like that. So selecting items, um, pretty straightforward. Um, again, you can link to existing databases. So if you do have your item set up in another database and you want to link Quotworks to it, we can do that. Uh, if you want to import your price list into Quotworks, you can do that. If you're going to do a mixture of both, that's fine. Also, as you can see here, I do have multiple databases that I've set up in Quotworks. So it's not really a wrong or right way. It's just what your preference is, what's easiest for you. So let's go back to our document item screen now. So your document item screen in Quotworks is kind of like your main screen. This is where you're going to spend a lot of your time because this is where you're going to make adjustments to this particular quote for your customer. So anything on your tabs up at the top is going to be related to this quote that you're working on. So again, we have our contact information and our sold to ship to tab. We have our sale info tab, which would be more like your um, document specific information. This is where you set the document date, um, who owns the document, so who has ownership of the document, um, expiration date, tax rate, things of that nature. There's a notes tab, so if you need to put notes about this document, either customer facing notes or internal notes, you'll be able to do that. The introduction and closing would be um, customer facing notes where you're purchasing an internal would be just internal notes. We have custom fields available. So if you do see fields, or if you have fields in your system or your process that you need, and you don't see a field for it in Quoteworks, um, all these fields are customizable, so you can make those changes. And then the links tab is very useful if you have additional documentation that you want to include with this quote or proposal. Maybe you want to be able to reference the customer's RFP or the RFQ that they provided you, or you have an Excel sheet that you want to attach you can use the links tab to attach any types of documents that you want associated with this quote that we're building in Quoteworks. So saying that, out of all those tabs, you're going to spend the most time on the document items tab. This is where we're going to choose kind of what the document's going to look like for the customer. So we're going to say, okay, our description field here is what the customer is going to see. This is going to be our customer facing description. Now you can see it's, um, it cuts off here, but as these Columns are resizable, so you can make these changes if you need to. You can rename these columns, so if you use different terminology, don't worry about that. All that's customizable. If you double click in this description field, you'll actually see the entire item's description. So if you wanted to change the item's description, you can do that. Maybe we just want to call this a trip light switch instead of a trip light switch with the part number and all that information. We just want to simplify it for our customer. So let's go ahead and change it, and then it'll be updated here. And that's going to be our new customer's description. Now this isn't going to update any items you have in your database. So once you've pulled your items into your document item screen, you don't have to worry about Quoteworks retroactively going back and updating your databases with any changes. We're just making the change on this document for this specific customer that we're creating the quote for. So you don't have to worry about your parts being changed or if you adjust a part number or pricing or anything like that, it um, changing your database. It's just going to be for this quote. Now once you've made your changes to your item descriptions, you can also adjust price. You'll see up at the top, we actually show you your extended cost, the extended price, which is basically your total cost for the document, your total price, the extended list, which is the MSRP again, and then your profit amount and your profit margin on the entire document. Um, there's also a couple of commission structures we support as well, and so we can calculate commission for you also. If you highlight an item, it'll change just for that specific item and show you what all that information is for your highlighted item also do multiple items. So if you're looking at your products and saying, you know, um, for every product we sell, we can't sell them at less than a 12% profit margin. We can see here, well, we're at a 9% profit margin. So we need to update our prices on these items. We need to increase them. So we can do that by highlighting those two items, right-clicking, and then if you scroll down, there's an option for apply price modifier. And then this will look very similar to what, we're, what we saw on the add item um, assistant where it lets you say, okay, just simply put in your new profit margin. So we want to get to at least 9%. So let's go ahead and say we, we need a 12% profit margin. And we'll click OK. And now if we select our two items, we'll actually see we're at the correct profit margin now. So Quoteworks is very flexible with changing prices on the fly. So if you need to discount items or mark items up, you can do that even after you've added them to the document. We can move items around, um, so it's going to be very flexible with any type of pr um, pricing or changes that you need to make on a line item basis. Uh, if you just wanted to type in the price, maybe you didn't want to sell this item for $42.05. You said, you know, I just want to sell it for 
you can just type in $45 if you like and um, give the customer an easy number. Uh, if you want to round it, we can even round the numbers for you. Um, you just simply put in R and then the dollar amount at the end. So if it's to the nearest dollar, be R01. So um, very simple to do, um, very flexible with changing any of those prices in QuoteWorks. So once we have our items um, priced the way we want to, we can now make any adjustments to where they are in the document. So if you need to drag and drop items, you can do that. Uh, so if you're looking at your optional item saying, you know, this really is an optional item, I want to move it up to my products, you could do a cut and paste or copy and paste if you'd like. So if you right click, you'll see there's the option for cut, copy and paste. Uh, we also do support drag and drop. So that's simply going to be hold left click on your mouse and then you simply drag it up to where you want it in the document. So again, very simple. So if you look at this empty blue space here where the indicator is, we can just drag it to where we want it to show up on the document. So it makes it very simple to move items around. You know, if you added a bunch of items and now you're adding heading lines later, you can go through and you can move the items exactly where you want to. The last thing I want to show you on this screen before we go to saving the document and delivering it to the customer is going to be, if you right click, as you can see, there's um, quite a bit of options. Um, there's going to be all these options in here related to the quote. So if you need to insert a blank line, if you need to add an item on the fly, you can use the blank lines for this. It'll have a $0 price, a $0 cost, and a blank description for you to fill in. Very useful, like I said, if you need to add any kind of item on the fly, or if you have maybe like a custom item you're doing specific for this customer, you can add it here. If you need to insert a comment line, you can do that as well. So if you have anything that's included, uh, maybe it's just text about a specific line item in the document, or maybe it's a break in the document that you want to provide some more information about, you can use a comment line for that also. Your heading lines, we already discussed these, but um, this again, this is how you get to them by right-clicking on there. And then there's going to be a few other options. So we can actually add subtotals to the document. So if you kind of want to organize your document and break it out into the different sections and show your customer what they're purchasing, we can do that. So if we go to our product section and let's say, okay, we want to subtotal out our products, simply right click on where you want the subtotal to run. The subtotal is always going to be put after your highlighted item. So if you want your subtotal right underneath this item, you simply click on it, right click, and choose add subtotal. And it'll add a subtotal right underneath it. And then you can even type in here, you could call it product subtotal if you'd like, or products total if you'd like to adjust that. And you can run more than one subtotal if you'd like to. So if you want to run one for services as well, we can right click again on our last services item, click add subtotal. And then we can type in here services subtotal, or we can even call it our services total. So again, it's going to be very flexible with changing things and um, showing what the customer is going to receive. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those just for now. The other thing I wanted to mention on here is your line attributes in QuoteWorks. So a lot of times we don't want to show the customer all our individual prices or we want to group items together and say, hey, this is the package we're selling you, um, but we don't want the customer to see the individual items because they might try to price shop or something like that. In QuoteWorks, very easy to do. If you highlight one or multiple items, so actually let's go down to our, to our optional items and right click. There's an option for edit line attributes. The line attributes are how we define what type of product or service this is in QuoteWorks. So if your item is optional, this is actually where you can set that. So we can say, okay, yes, these items are optional. And then you have the option of whether or not you want them included in the document total. So if we do, we'll check the box. If you don't want them included in the document total, you leave it unchecked and this won't include it for the customer. They'll still be able to see it on the output, but it won't be included in that total for the document. Then you're going to have a few other options. Um, you can change the tax code. So if you have items that are taxable or non-taxable and you want to switch them, uh, you can make that adjustment here. Maybe you want to hide the price. Very useful if you have something that you added to the document and you don't want the customer to see the individual prices of your items. You can hide the individual prices and you could just run a subtotal saying, hey, you're purchasing these five items and here's the subtotal so they can see it for that section. And then, oh, you're purchasing these three services and here's a subtotal for that section. So you can um, control exactly what the customer is going to see on the document. We can also hide the quantity. This is extremely useful if you do any kind of services, uh, if you offer labor, installation, um, anything like that. A lot of times that's done by the hours. And a lot of times customers, when they see, oh, it's seven hours of labor, they'll say, oh, you know, um, can't you do, do it in three or four? Can you do it in five or six instead of seven or eight? So instead of having to worry about that, if, if you still want to show those kind of charges on the document, 
you can hide the quantity, and then it just looks like a flat charge for labor. So you're saying, oh, this is the installation charge, this is the labor charge. It's not showing how many hours or how long it's actually going to take. It's just saying this is what the charge is going to be. You also have the option to print the line. So if you don't want something to show up on the document, you can choose not to print it. It'll still be included in the total, but the customer will never see it. Very useful if you um, are selling items in like a package group. You can group those items together and you can hide individual items. That way you don't have to worry about them showing up on the document and the customer saying, oh, why are you charging me $25 for a power cable? Um, I can buy a $2 one at Walmart or something like that. So just it helps kind of alleviate those kind of conversations and negotiations that you have to have with your customers. And then if you do have any items that have pictures, you can choose whether or not they'd like to, you would like them to print. And then if you also have any recurring charges, so if you do have weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual charges, you can choose whether or not you'd like those to show up on the document. If you do have any recurring charges, they will be shown up at the bottom right here. So you can actually see it does break out our recurring charge. And that's going to be set if I select my items here and go back to line attributes. So we can say, OK, yeah, they are recurring. And then you have the option, is it weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual? And then when does the cycle start? Is it the start of the cycle, which would be the beginning of the week, beginning of the month, beginning of the quarter, beginning of the year? Or is it a specific date? So we'll go ahead and say specific date. And then do you, do you, would you like to include the first payment in the document total? And then do you want to specify the dates or use the contract date? Contract dates are set on the sale info tab. So if you're setting um, a specific contract information on your in the QuoteWorks document and you set it on the sale info tab, you can have it just use those dates. If you'd, like, if you'd like to specify them, maybe for this specific item or these items here that I've selected, I want to say, OK, it starts today and it goes for a year. And that would update it to recurring. Um, that one was already set as recurring, so it's not going to make any price changes. But you can see here that will be um, shown. If you do have monthly and quarterly items, those will show up. If they're weekly and annual, they'll show up. So whichever um, kind of recurring items you have, those will be displayed on the document. So now we've made all our changes to the document. We're ready to send it to the customer. So the next step is to save the document in QuoteWorks. And we have an um, icon right here, so you can don't actually have to leave the document on the screen to do it. And the save is where you're going to not only name the document, so very similar to if you're using Microsoft Word or Excel now, when you hit save, that's when you say, hey, this is what I want to name the document, same way in QuoteWorks. One of the nice things is that we can actually set up a specific naming convention for you. Now, by default, we use the company that we're selling to in today's date, but you could use a different naming convention if you'd like. It's actually a setting in the options in QuoteWorks that you can change. One of the other nice things about QuoteWorks is we do number all the documents. The reason for this is that we store all our documents in a database that's, that is searchable. So since we have a searchable database, we assign them all the document numbers so that you can actually search by document number, or if your customer references the document number, we'll do that. We do assign that automatically. You can change it if you'd like, but we do recommend just using the document number. Um, just makes it a lot easier instead of having to manage them yourselves. You just let QuoteWorks manage it. The status will be set as open. Uh, this is typically um, the normal status, but you could also call it drafted or quoted or whatever you want to set the status of the document. It's up to you. And then we do also offer project numbers. So if you're creating multiple quotes for the same project, maybe it has different phases or different options, you can assign them the same project number. That way you can run a report or filter on that project number. Now, if you're using any of the CRM or PSAs that we support, there will be a dialog box that shows up right underneath here. That also includes the options for creating the opportunity, um, creating follow-up activities, anything like that. So when you're ready to take the information from QuoteWorks and send it over to your CRM or PSA, simply click on the Save icon. That's going to be what triggers that information. So you'll, it'll save your document first, and then it'll actually create the opportunity in your CRM or PSA system. So let's go ahead and hit OK. And you can see up at the top, we now have our document name and our document number. So now we're ready to deliver the document to the customer. Uh, before we get there, though, I just want to show you um, the dashboard in QuoteWorks real quick. Um, this is where you can actually view kind of like a snapshot of your documents in QuoteWorks. So if you want to see what, how many quotes you've created this month and how many were converted to orders, same thing for last month and two months ago, that information is here. It'll also show you any recent documents as well as any quotes you have expiring within the next seven days. So the dashboard is very useful for just kind of seeing what's going on with your documents in QuoteWorks. Um, great place to start every time you are going to create a new document in QuoteWorks or when you first log in. I'd recommend going to the dashboard first. 
So right next to the dashboard window is going to be our deliver icon. This is when we're ready to deliver the document to the customer. So we'll click on deliver. Now we can actually build out our document in QuoteWorks. Now I have um, quite a few different layouts because this is my demonstration machine. So I have um, quite a few different layouts. Typically, you're only going to have a handful or a couple that you've customized specifically for your system. Or you may just have one. Um, it's going to be up to you how you want to set that up. These are all fully customizable. So again, you're going to have your two options. You can do the QuoteWorks Layout Designer or the Microsoft Word Merging Layouts. Um, one's not necessarily better than the other. Than the other. They just kind of do different things. So the QuoteWorks Layout Designer is great if you need to send out just a quote to your customer. Maybe you have just a couple attachments that you want to include, but it's not going to be something like a full proposal where you have like a service agreement and warranty information and that kind of stuff. So it just kind of depends what you want, what you're going to use. But they both work, um, and you can actually use them interchangeably if you like. So I'm going to show you the quote document first. So let's go ahead and select our quote document here, and then you'll see up at the top there's an option for cover page, which we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and uncheck for now. Literature, spec sheets, and your links tab. So your cover page would be just that if you wanted to include a cover page for the document. It does support macros, so if you wanted it to pull information from quote works like the company name and the contact you're selling to and today's date and the document name, document number, that kind of information, we can pull that in. Your literature is typically going to be your document information that goes out with almost every quote or pr proposal that you create. So kind of like your standard terms and conditions, um, your warranty information, anything like that that kind of goes out with every document you'll probably use as literature documentation in QuoteWorks. Your spec sheets will be specific to items you have in the document. So if you have something that you wanted to include, maybe some more technical information about a particular line item in the document, you can set up a spec sheet for that item. And then once you've selected that item in your quote, the spec sheet will be available here to include in this quote or proposal that we send to the customer. And then your last option would be the links tab. So if you have other documents that we talked about earlier that you added to this links tab and you want to include them with the quota proposal that we send to the customer, you can select them here. So let's go ahead and just do the quote layout first. So we'll preview it and this will bring up our quote document. Now again, this is fully customizable. This is a simple representation of what the software can do, but um, it kind of gets the point across where you can drop in your own logo, you can um, have a photo of yourself if you'd like or a photo of the sales rep, and then you can have your different sections of the document so it's easy for the customer to see exactly what they would be purchasing. It can even be broken out into monthly information so they can see the monthly charges and then the total charges in the document. And again, fully customizable. So you could actually use this exact layout if you wanted to say, oh, you know, that, that's pretty close to what we're doing. I just want to change the colors. You can do that. You can change fonts, formatting, everything. Now, if you wanted to do more of a proposal style document, it's going to be very simple. All you're going to do is simply select a different layout in QuoteWorks. That's really one of the um, nice things about QuoteWorks is that when you're ready to deliver this to the customer, you're not having to redesign the quote that you created here. You simply select the output that you want to deliver to the customer. So if we want to select more of a um, proposal style document and include a cover page, and then we do have some literature information, maybe some more information about the company that we want to include. Maybe it's a new customer, so we'd like them to have all the information. We can include all that and then click Preview. And this is actually going to take all those pages. So that last quote was one page, and now this is going to put into probably five or six pages, and we'll be able to actually attach that information here. Uh, Peter, yes, we do support um, DNH in our real-time um, integration. We don't support secure Mantics, but we you would be able to import a price file into QuoteWorks and at least have their price list if you wanted to do that. So this would be an example of a cover page. And again, um, fully customizable. But this one just shows you you can have some of the information you can have. So you can have your document number, who is prepared by, or prepared for, prepared by, and the expiration date for the document. We then include some information about our company that the customer can view. And then we have our line item information. So again, this is broken up, so it's just very easy for the customer to see. Here's our products, here's our services, our optional items and it's um, a quote summary at the bottom so they can see how much the total is going to be for the document. And then we get into our page four. So we have actually have customer testimonials saying, hey, um, this, we use QuoteWorks. It's great. All that information is here so customers can read that. And then some more information about the product, so additional features that are available, and then what's included with your QuoteWorks purchase.
So this is just, again, another example that you can do, but the software is very powerful and includes a lot of information. Um, we do include the layouts in the trial of the software, so if you are evaluating currently, uh, there's about eight or nine different layouts that come with it. There's some more on the website, so if you're looking for something a little different, check out, check out our website under our downloads area. There's actually a sample layouts page, and you can view additional layouts that you may want to use. Uh, if you are using Word, um, you're going to do everything the exact same way. You're just going to have a Word layout instead. Um, that's going to be the only difference. So if we close out of here and we go back to our layout tab, you'll actually see I have a word proposal layout. So if I selected this one, this will actually open up a Word document. And then you can see here it has macros in there that it's going to start populating with information from QuoteWorks. So again, the layout designer or the word merge, um, it's up to you, um, whichever is more comfortable for you. Um, I would recommend the Word layout if you do more proposal style documents where you have a lot of information that you want to include. Um, you know, maybe things change. It's kind of a customized document that you send out on a uh, per customer basis. If you're using something that's um, fairly static and just needs to change with like line items and company information, then you can probably use our layout designer. But um, either one's probably going to work for you. So this is an example of the Word layout designer, and you can see it's going to have an executive summary. Um, about us information, advantages, and then there's actually even a support agreement all the way at the bottom. So I'm not going to go through all 17 pages of this document, but just to give you another example of uh, kind of what QuoteWorks can do. So we're going to go back to our original just quote document because we're just going to send this customer a, a simple quote that we want them to purchase. So once you've selected your layout that you're going to use here, we are now ready to deliver it to the customer. So your first option is to simply email it from QuoteWorks. So if you use Microsoft Outlook or Gmail or really any kind of um, email client, we'll be able to email it directly from QuoteWorks. You can set up document approvals. So this um, option here is actually saying that, hey, this document is over $1,000, and any documents over $1,000 needs management approval. So if you are worried about your reps sending out documents, um, you know, specifically new reps who have very limited experience, so you don't want them sending something out with you know, a $50,000 quote with a bunch of mistakes on it. You can set up specific approvals so they actually have to get a sales manager approval or someone else on the team's approval before it can be delivered to the customer. So since I have master rights, which means I'm a QuoteWorks admin, I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that because I don't need approval for my own document. So this brings up our email window, and this email is customizable. So you can put in your own um, information. You could put your logo in here, um, design the signature, however you'd like to do that. You can also create email templates. So if you have multiple templates, you know maybe this is a product quote that you're sending to the customer, and you want to, and you're actually sending a, you want to use a product template specifically. Maybe it has um, information on returns and things of that nature. You could set up different email templates that can be used in the software as well. You'll see we do have our attachment here, so our PDF document is attached, and then you would simply hit send, and it would send out to the customer. Now the to information is going to be automatically populated by the sold to contact information. So if you remember at the very beginning of the webinar when we selected the contact, that's the email address we're going to use for pretty much everything. So the, again, that's why it's important to have the correct contact information in that sold to information. So if we want to deliver it via email, that's what we do is we click send. Now if we're going to use Quote Valet, we're going to do everything the exact same way we just did. The only difference is after we select our layout, we're simply going to select upload to Quote Valet and then hit yes, and then it will upload our document to Quote Valley first. And then once this is done, we'll be able to preview our document. So if we actually wanted to see what it was going to look like before we delivered it to the customer, we'll have that option. So if we want to see the PDF version of it, we can actually view it from here. Typically, you'll probably preview it before you get to this step, but you do have it um, if you forgot to preview it before uploading to Quote Valley. The next step is going to click on Upload. Um, JP, to edit your signature, it's going to be under Tools, My Preferences, and then there's an Email tab. And if you click on that Email tab, there's an option to edit your signature for the um, emails. So once we upload our document to Quote Valley, again, you'll be able to preview to see what it looks like in Quote Valley. You'll typically want to do this. I'm going to go ahead and skip this step because I want to show you the customer-facing side of things first. So we'll click on Send Email. And this brings up our email window. So it's going to look very familiar to what we just saw. But you'll see a few slight differences. So the first one, there's not going to be any attachment. 
We're not actually including the PDF because we're just delivering the customer a link. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this customer's link. So we're going to pretend we emailed this document out to my customer and then they received the email and then they clicked on the link. So they clicked on the link and it opens up their quote in their web browser. So this is important because when the customer clicks on that link, you're going to receive an email from Quote Valet notifying you that the customer viewed the quote for the first time. So you now know that not only has the customer actually received the quote, but they viewed it. They've actually clicked on the link. And again, this is going to be done in HTML, so this is customizable as well. So if you want to change the look of your Quote Valet templates, um, you'll be able to do that. Uh, a lot of this information is going to be pulled from QuoteWorks. So your document number, who's prepared for, prepared by, the expiration date, the sales rep, all that information is coming from QuoteWorks, so you can change that as needed. Here you'll see we do include a copy of the PDF document. So if you do have terms and conditions, service contracts, warranty information that the customer needs to actually physically read over, they can actually click on this PDF document here, and it'll open it up for them so they can view it. And maybe they do need a copy of, maybe you have a service agreement going with them, so they need to be able to download that service agreement. As long as it's part of the PDF, they'll be able to pull that down as well. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the line item detail. Now, this is my favorite part about Quote Valley. Um, this is a really cool feature, is that when you send your document via Quote Valley, you can actually make it dynamic for the customer. So the customer can actually go through and make selections. So for instance, here, if you see, we have our optional items. So right now, our subtotal was $2,700. So if I uncheck these two boxes and I click Update, It'll actually deduct it from our total, so it's now $2,200. So it actually removed those items that I unchecked. And if I wanted to include them back, I can simply click Update, and it'll update our total. So this is a really nice feature to have where you're, you can actually give your customer true options where they can select, OK, this is definitely something we want to select, or we don't want this. You can also do mutually exclusive options, where if you want to give your customer the option between a good, better, best kind of deal, you know, you're saying, okay, here's option one, here's option two, here's option three, there can be a radial button instead of a checkbox where the customer can actually select which one they'd rather have. Um, and you can actually have it forced for them, they have to select one of the three or four or five options, however many you've set. You will also have the option of giving the customer the chance to change the quantity. I don't have mine set up like that because we don't actually offer that with our documents. But if you wanted to give the customer the chance to change the quantity, to update it to you know from 2 to 3 or 4 to 25 if you wanted to, um, you can set that up as well. So it gives the customer a lot of options and a lot of flexibility to make changes to it so they're not emailing you and calling you and saying, hey, can you update this? Oh, I forgot. Um, can you change this item? Can you change this? You, the customer can make a lot of those selections themselves. So once the customers reviewed the document, they can actually go down to the acceptance portion where they can actually electronically sign and accept the document. If they have any comments or questions about the document, you'll see there's a comment section all the way down at the bottom. So they can actually post a comment here. So if we wanted to post a comment, we can post our question here. And when we do that and we hit submit, not only is this going to submit our comment to Quote Valley, and if you scroll down all the way on the Quote Valley page, you'll see that now you can see our question. This also sends an email to the sales rep notifying the customer or notifying them that the customer posted a comment. So if you're the sales rep, you open up your email, you'll see it says, okay, customer posted a comment. You can then open up that email and you can see the customer's text. So we'll actually include what the customer posted in that comment. So maybe it's something that you don't need to reply to. Maybe they just said, oh, we're going to purchase tomorrow. So you don't necessarily need to reply to that. Or maybe they ask a specific question or saying, hey, line item number two, can you change that quantity to three or can you remove that item? Uh, you can actually go ahead and do that and then respond back to the customer. But it's nice to get that information where the customer doesn't have to say, okay, let me go back to my email system. Let me find the email that you sent to me. And let me go ahead and open that and reply back and say, okay, I need you to change this. They can just say, as they're looking at the quote, scroll down and say, oh, can you change this or can you update this or I have a question about this right here in one screen. So it's really nice. And like I said, you do receive that notification. So let's go back to QuoteWorks. So we sent the quote to the customer. Now you'll see all the way at the end there's a Quote Valet tab that's available. Anytime you're using Quote Valet, this Quote Valet tab will be here. And this is going to show you all the activity for this customer. So we can actually see with the timestamp when it was created for the customer, when they viewed it the first time, if they viewed the PDF attachment, if they changed any options, which they did twice, and then if they posted a comment. 
And then on this Quilp LA tab, you'll have the option to view the sales rep facing page, which will allow you to respond to that customer's comment if you'd like. You can also view the customer facing side, so if you just want to make a change or just see what the customer sees, you can do that. And then you can also recall the quote. So if you send out a quote to your customer and maybe something changed, pricing is no longer available or you forgot to include sales tax or something like that, you can recall the quote and you don't have to worry about the customer accepting a document that is essentially not valid. So it makes it really easy to quickly pull it down, make changes, and then you can re-upload it to Quote Valley. Also very useful, this inform the tracking information is if you did make a mistake with the customer, you can check the activity. Maybe the customer hasn't even viewed the quote yet and you can quickly make the change, re-upload it, and then now the customer will only see the most updated information. Where before, if you just send a PDF and you made a mistake, now you have to resend the PDF and say, hey, don't worry about that document that's invalid. Make sure you just look at this quote. With Quote Valley, you'll never have that kind of worry um, anymore. So let's go back to our document. Let's go ahead and have the customer accept. So the customer looks everything over. Everything looks great. So let's go ahead and accept the terms and conditions by checking this box. They can put in a PO number here if they'd like. They don't have to. And if they have any comments, they can post those as well. And then they can just sign off on the document. So we'll sign off on our document here and click to accept. And then this will bring us to the acceptance screen, um, which will then send over a email to your sales rep notifying them that they accepted the quote. If you accept credit cards or PayPal, this Pay Now button can be available so the customer can actually make payment directly from here as well. And then you can see this will just bring you to the payment screen so you can make payment on the document. Um, once your customer accepts the quote, you do receive that email notifying you that they accepted the quote. If the customer makes payment, you'll receive an email notifying you that the customer made payment. So let's go back into QuoteWorks. And now that your quote has been accepted by the customer, you can now convert this quote to an order. So if we check Quote Valley for updates, it'll let you know that we want to convert this quote to an order. If you're not using Quote Valley, um, that's fine. It's very easy to convert your quote to an order. If the customer said um, maybe they signed the document and they faxed it back to you or they scanned it and emailed it back to you and you're ready to go to the next step, you can simply click on File, Convert to Order. It's going to bring up the same exact window. And what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to update the document in QuoteWorks as closed. So it's basically how we close quotes in QuoteWorks. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit OK. And it's going to create a new order document for us. You'll know, actually see all the way to the right, it tells us that now it's in order. If you're using one of the CRM or PSAs that we support, this will also update that opportunity that you originally created as one or uh, closed, depending on the terminology that they use. So the converting to an order is going to be it's going to do two things. It closes the document in QuoteWorks, but also updates your opportunity that you had originally created with any changes, with any final changes that the customer made. And now you can go through to your purchasing side of things. So if you're using QuickBooks or Sage 50 and you just want to send this document over to QuickBooks or Sage 50, you can do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show QuickBooks because this is um, what I have set up on this machine. So if I click on QuickBooks, I have, it show, I have it set up to show me any orders that are open currently for this month. So I just have this one, and now I want to export it over to QuickBooks. So I can send it over as an estimate, sales order, or invoice. I'm going to select my document, click Export. And you do have to have QuickBooks running um, or Sage 50 if you're using Sage 50. And then it's just going to prompt you and kind of go through the different items. If any of the items don't exist, it will actually create them for you. Um, and then if the customer doesn't exist, it'll do that for you as well. If you're using Sage 50, it works the exact same way. Um, you won't actually notice a functional difference from this if you're using Sage 50. And then you can see it's going to create as invoice number 40. So if we go into QuickBooks, and we go to our invoices here, and we can see invoice number 40. And you can actually see my line items from the document. So that's one way that you can deliver the document to QuickBooks or Stage 50. Now, if you wanted to create the purchase order instead of an estimate, sales order, or invoice in QuoteWorks, then you would simply click on the purchase theme. This is also where you would go if you're placing online orders with the distributors that we support. So if you're using Tech Data, Ingram Micro, Synex, DNH, any of those four um, vendors, you'll click on purchasing, and this will bring you to the purchasing window, where now you can either place the online order or just a purchase order. You'll actually be able to break it down by vendor. So in this case, if 
for this currently open order, we have they all have the same vendor. But if I had, if I search multiple orders, I could actually say, okay, show me, uh, for instance, DNH, and it'll show me all my items from DNH. And when I select those items, I can then place the online order. And then once it places the online order, it's going to create the purchase order. Um, now I can only go so far in here because this is actually live. So if any of you are using Ingram, Synex, Tech Data, or DNH, uh, this window is going to look almost exactly the same for all four vendors. So um, either way, you'll kind of get the idea of how it works. Um, but it's pretty simple. You simply verify the current pricing and availability, validate the order, and then submit it. You can also set the shipping information as well. So if you want to select your location to have it um, shipped to you, you can do that. Um, you can also have it pull from the specific end user if it's for the same order or if it's for the same customer. So again, this is about as far as I can go because this is live. Um, so we're going to go back to our currently open order, select our vendor, and instead we're going to create our purchase order. Now you'll see down at the bottom, it also shows you your minimum shipping. So if you do have a minimum shipping for any of your vendors, um, whether they're part of our online ordering or not, you can actually see before you create the purchase order in QuoteWorks if you need to add more items to that order to get to that shipping minimum. And that's something that you can set up at QuoteWorks. So, um, it's, a, it's a really nice feature to have that lets you know, hey, you hit your minimum shipping for this particular vendor. So let's go ahead and create our purchase order. So we'll create PO. And then this is where it'll prompt you. It'll say, hey, if you want to create this purchase order in QuickBooks, you'll have the option here. You can actually see it here. And then if we want to use it for QuickBooks, it'll say, we'll just use the next PO number in QuickBooks. If you're using Sage 50 Autotask or ConnectWise, it'll have the same thing. It'll just say export to Autotask instead of QuickBooks here. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit OK. And then I'll create our document in QuickBooks. So it'll let you know, hey, QuickBooks PO number 34 was created. And then if you're not exporting, if you're just creating the manual purchase order in QuoteWorks, you can click on the Purchase Orders tab. And you can say, OK, show me all my purchase orders for today. And there's my purchase order that is in there. And then it's going to have my information. So I can choose to go through the receiving. If I want to mark my items as received, I can do that. If I need to add serial numbers or tracking numbers, I can do that as well. If you're using one of the vendors that we support, you'll actually be able to click on the real-time button here. And this will get your real-time status for any of these items from that selected vendor. Um, again, that's only going to be for the four distributors that we support. But any other vendors, you can update it manually here. Um, and then if you are using QuickBooks, it can update QuickBooks um, with the received status as well. So I know we're uh, short on time, um, so if you guys do have any questions, um, feel free to start sending them my way. Um, if not, uh, thank you for attending, and uh, you, if anyone has any questions about QuoteWorks in general, definitely let us know. Um, like I said, I'll stay back another few minutes here, and uh, feel, feel free to send over any questions. I'd be happy to answer those for you guys.